questions, comments, concerns before we wrap up for today? Oh, yes, by all means, Barry. Let me get my mic here. Very well done. <clears throat> awesome. Very well done. Everybody's just floating along in this uh, in this field, and and to be able to, to extrapolate what's going forward from the data is, uh, I I think you're very accurate, based on what I'm seeing here in in uh, Central California, the Bay Area, and the dispensaries here, and what what's not selling and the dispensaries are empty what's happening so we we have home we have we're allowed to grow it at home now here so that's happening quality of seeds extremely important quality of the end product very important because, you know, as some of you know, it goes from, this is no good. It wasn't worth the dirt to grow it in. But this one, with skill set of knowing how to generate a quality product under a microscope, that, that factor... How would I explain this? Okay, for instance, back in when they were raising corn, soybeans, any kind of crop. The the let's take soybeans. The more onions that showed up in the soybeans, the less the farmer got. So it was a quality rating, right? We'll give you this much because of this quality. We'll give you this much, this quality, this much, this quality. The, stri the striving is for the, the top shelf. Uh, and you may already know this, but everybody wants to strive for the top shelf product. And, and uh, you don't want to, you want to, if you'll spend, people will spend the money on what they know is a top quality product rather than just an assumption at a dispensary uh, looking at the product, you don't know how it was cured, you don't know how it was aged, uh, dried, that sort of thing. So um, using using the chicken, the Tyson chicken uh, model, where they they set up uh, they set up their chicken hatcheries and and grower, groweries, uh, all it's all set up, it's all pre done by Tyson. They place the grow. Uh, it's a it's a greenhouse. Large. That's it's a large greenhouse, and they've got hundreds of chickens in this, and it's all automated. And Tyson just comes and pours the feed in the hopper, and they adjust the water and the and the fertilizers and all that kind of stuff, and it's just turnkey so they pay they will pay the landowner to place this on their land where they have spare space and that's how they grow chick that's how they, tyson does chickens so lowering your labor cost and improving your product quality yes is, is what it appears we're aiming at right now and what you've described is the challenge people are having, right? Because that's what they want to do with cannabis, right? People want to come and do the exact same thing with Tyson, right? These turnkey solutions and people are trying and you can create products and pretty good products. But I, I don't want to speak for certain, but what I've observed is the tippity top shelf like the the really pristine flower is hard to scale at that quality so where you see this premium flower it sells out because whoever's producing it can't produce enough of it and 
one would wonder why don't they increase their production? Well, they may not be able to. Um, so, you know, they may have hit sort of like a soft ceiling. So, and that's my current running hypothesis is there may be some sort of, like, there's some sort of like natural threshold that's going to have to get broken. So it seems like you can like keep growing this really nice flower. You can keep scaling that up to a certain level. And then, and that's where we were seeing when we were looking at the plant data in Massachusetts, where you see the plants going up and then it almost starts coming down where I feel like people try to keep growing and scaling and scaling their facilities, but maybe at a certain point, your facility gets so big that you're not managing it in the same attention to detail way that you were doing to do the premium flower mm -hmm. and then your quality starts to dr drop off. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're just producing a lot of mid-tier flower. Mm -hmm. so instead of producing a lot of premium flower, you mm -hmm. produce a lot of mid-tier flower. And as you pointed out, mid-tier flower has a different price point than premium flower. And so all of a sudden you're not, your, your business plans aren't coming together because you thought you were going to pre be producing tons and tons of premium flower. And it's actually not quite the same that you could have done if your facility was slightly smaller. So I think it's something that people are still working on. I have confidence that people can figure this out. So people want this here. The population here in California, they wanted it. They voted for it. They want it, but they want to know that it's not from somebody's backyard grow using DDT. They want to know that it's grown organically, uh, that it's, it's lab tested. That's extremely important. And to, uh, you know, uh, under a microscope, hitting it right when it's the right, that, you know, like a, any harvest, you know, we're going to harvest it all today because it's all ripe right now. We're going to freeze it. We're going to ship it off. Um, that's, that's so critical for the grower to uh, wrap his head around. That's the, that, the end product is the quality of those trichomes. And, and the density. Uh, am I? Yes. Are you, are you guys tracking on me, or am I way behind? I'm a new. I'm a newbie. I'm just learning about this. And yes. a chemist described it as you're basically just growing the plants as a vehicle of these chemicals, right? Basically, yeah. the reason you're doing this, it and you know, there's some people out there, right? There, that's the people like synthesizing cannabinoids. They're like, oh, can we do this more efficiently than the plant? And basically the people cultivating it, their argument is growing the plant is the most efficient way to produce the chemicals, right? You're basically, the like, plant is your chemical factory. And it's basic, and you know, some people have a preference for consuming the flower but essentially the idea is, you know, you're consuming the flour or the oil. It's all about the, the cannabinoids at the end of the day. Right, right. So. Exactly. That's, it's the effect. And uh, if that could be, you know, uh, streamlined like a Tyson or any of, the, of these other growers that are food growers, that can be streamlined, minimize um, production cost. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, I'm learning this, okay? I'm using cover crops. I'm using soil mixtures and really trying to zero in microscopically to what is high quality and what's not. And I found that it does matter, the attention and the, the quality you, if this is a, a good quality and this is a so-so quality, why do I want that? Throw it out. Yes. And you know, <laughs> I, I love your interest and we may have to return to this in another meetup because okay. this is a, something we've been trying to uncover. See the data today, right? It's all aggregate. We can't tell the quality. 
but it's a good, it's, it's well done. Yes. So it's a baseline, like you say, it's a baseline to go from. So I would just like to say what you want to do is possible. So for example, in Washington state, you can do a freedom of information act request and get all the sales data. So you actually have sales with cannabinoids and you can run a regression and, and this is the question I've been dying to answer and we'll work it out and do it in a meetup group. So I've been teasing this forever and one, one week we'll finally do it, mm. but essentially it, it's a data problem because the data sets are so large, but you know, if you just run a regression of sales on cannabinoids, that'll, and like I said, it's kind of like today, you can keep making the models more and more complex but you can begin to quantify how much does 1% increase in cannabinoids, how much will that increase your sales on average? So, so these and are- branding. We have smaller nurseries out here. We have many small nurseries in California. You probably already know. So they get a reputation then the dispensaries want to buy from those nurseries because the quality of the product, of course. Uh, they want the best they can get people in the door. They want the best quality. So um, I, I've looked at what the dispensaries have and I've looked at it with a loop, jeweler's loop. And it's just, it looks fine on the outside, but to a uh, grower, home-based grower, if you're using a microscope or a loop, there's a big difference between what you can do yourself and what is being sold. Like you said, an a, a more of a medium or average uh, level of, uh, of the product, of the, the potency. Yes. And this, <laughs> and this is, I think we'll conclude here in a second, but you yeah. should definitely come back next week because maybe yeah. we can talk more about this because mm -hmm. this is, I think what you're hitting on here is, and it's apparent, like you go to any dispensary, often they'll have their products, right? They'll be like the top tier and the medium tier. And then they'll be like the, the swag bag where they're just, you know, they're giving out a large amount for real, real, real cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's definitely different tiers at the at the dispensaries, and we we should try to quantify this and see if we can't discover any interesting insights. Well, it's interesting because the things I've been experiencing, and I'm not an analyt analytics guy like you. Your your tracking is right along with what I'm experiencing here in California with a general, I have a widespread of networking here. And uh, I, I, I'm seeing the same, I'm seeing the same thing that you're, what you just explained is true. When you look at the numbers like that, it, to me, as a grower, I'm seeing this, those numbers are translating correctly to the, to what has been happening when you showed when you showed the uprising and then you started to show the downfall and as the as the market gets more saturated with growers then you you know your price is going to come down of course but growers in themselves like winemakers that you just to establish that name that brand name and that quality that's what people are looking for. They want to know, where did you get these seeds? Did you get these seeds down here or did you get them from Amsterdam? You it's, know? It, and that's actually, I think let's definitely talk about this next week and I'll try I mean, to. I don't want to hold you up. I don't want to. I'll try to talk about California if possible. I'll see you if I can't find any California data. But like you said, it's all about the seeds, right? And the way I like to think about it is, you see these people or, you know, you hear or hear people and they, they're, they sometimes they spend enormous amounts of money on their facilities and this and that. And I'm thinking like at the end of the day, like 
all like what type of seeds do you have to put in the ground <laughs> right because it's like you know that, it's sometimes yeah. people put the cart before the horse right mm -hmm. where it's like they've got this gin ginormous facility well it's like well do you have ten thousand premium seeds to put in the ground that you know are gonna be fantastic or, or clones ready to go and and this can this can be problems and for example people are having problems with disease so there's this hops latent viroid that you have to watch out for and i've heard that people are just losing whole genetic lineages to this vi virus so you may have your you know your mother room and maybe you're, you lose some valuable mothers and you lose some lineages so you know just because you get some good clones or some good seeds these are still valuable genetics that you have to you know be careful about preserving and so like you said it, it's a whole whole realm for analysis of its own it's fascinating that you're breaking it down into the numbers uh, you know i'm the person that just goes out and gets my hands in the dirt and sees what works and what doesn't <laughs> But uh, I appreciate that you put, putting the numbers out there pretty much correlates with what, what I'm seeing around here in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and what, what people like, what they're buying, and uh, the, the quality of the product. And, and, well, the overhead of these dispensaries has got to be incredible. Mm. So if you, could, if you could cut out the... You know what a push would be is if we could get this to be a mail order you could mail order i mean would change everything oh yes we well, got oh what, what were you gonna say heather oh no sounds like a fine idea oh yes well i think there would be a game changer so for lab testing it would be a game it would revolutionize lab testing if you could just mail your products to any lab in the United States to get tested. I think it could potentially shape up lab tests, right? So if you're not happy with the lab testing in your state, just mail it to a lab in another state. Um, or, and like you said, products, right? So if, <laughs> right, if you're not happy with the prices in your state, get some, some shipped to you. So I think it would, I think it would be real beneficial. It would be a huge gain. It would be a disrupting force. So you may have to, I don't think, I, I don't know if it'll just happen overnight because I don't think players in the industry would love that, but because it would be so disruptive, but it, it could be beneficial for a lot of people. But, so, Good job. I'm impressed. I didn't think I would follow along on analytics like that. Okay. Well, you, you, you're pretty accurate on your figures and how you extrapolate the data. In my opinion, in my humble opinion. But, um, th thank you, Barry. And it's, yeah. and that's why we love to have you is we we love your angle because you know, here we're pulling out these numbers and it's nice to get them grounded in reality to see, you know, are these at the end of the day, even realistic met metrics? Are they, are they useful? So Nothing sent up that. a red flag to me. I watched the charts. I listened to your presentation. Nothing seemed out of line with exactly what's going on here. Massachusetts is a different market, but it's, you could put California in there in place of Massachusetts and pretty much your model is going to replicate that. It's going to. Well, next, next week we'll do just that. We'll try to replicate this for California. And then if there are any differences, we can talk about them and maybe see why. And so let's oh, pick up there. Thank, thank you very much, uh, everybody, uh, you know, for. Definitely. I learned a lot and it's from getting my hands dirty to this is it matches. It's, yes. 
It's cohesive. Well, it's yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome to have you, Barry, Zabahula, Heather, Khalil, and Cheyenne. Yeah. This is a fun time. <laughs> Looking Thank forward. You so much, Keegan. Right Looking up. forward to the next one. Definitely. Well, feel free to tune in for Saturday morning statistics if you're interested in more statistics. Mm -hmm. Just one dollar. And then okay. next week we'll pick up and look at California next Wednesday. So if you've got time, oh. join the you can get all the California data. That quick. we'll we'll see what there is. So we'll see what public <laughs> data there is. Mm. I know one laboratory there, Merso Laboratories, to Merso Analytics. So I'll see if they've got any data that they may be interested in sharing. So we can see, we can see what data we may be able to find. That's very valuable. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you all for t coming. Have a productive week. Keep your nose yeah. to the grindstone, and I'll see you all here next week. All right, man. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you all. so much. Yeah. Bye now. Thanks, Keegan. You're welcome.